Hi, my name is Christine Paulson, and I'm an engineer here at the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. And today, I'm going to talk to you about ultra wideband impulse radar, or eye radar, and some of the imaging applications that we've been working on. Wouldn't it be great to have Superman's X ray vision superpowers? Think of all the people that could benefit from this search and rescue, construction, SWAT teams, the military. This is what we are trying to mimic by using the eye radar. The ultra wideband eye radar signals can penetrate through barriers. We can see through most types of walls, concrete, and soil. The eye radar is capable of detecting motion or distinct objects as small as a few centimeters in size. The advantages of the eye radar are its precise range resolution combined with its capability to penetrate materials. It's low power, has a small form factor, and compared to other types of radars, its circuitry is less complex. Additionally, eye radar is safe for use with humans and its signals won't interfere with other types of electronics. The eye radar has a few limitations. It cannot see through a solid sheet of metal. Also, it's typically better suited for short to mid-range applications, less than 50 feet. A single eye radar element can be used for many types of motion and range detection applications. Here's some examples in the pictures shown on the right. A single eye radar element can be designed to be very small, low power, low cost, and re require little computation. Some examples are intrusion sensors, stud finders, automotive backup sensors, and medical triage sensors. In order to achieve images or 3D tracking, it's necessary to combine these individual eye radar elements into an array. Eye radar arrays provide a rich amount of information. However, they come at the cost of being larger, they consume more power, and they're more complex. In addition, they require an embedded processing system or some form of offline computation. The applications for eye radar arrays include subsurface imaging, projectile tracking, person tracking, discriminating between hostages and hostiles, and buried landmine detection. You can see some examples of the eye radar arrays that we've built here. And as you can see, they come in a variety of shapes and sizes. And this is governed specifically by the different applications and their needs. In addition to the eye radar hardware, a critical component to eye radar imaging are the reconstruction algorithms. In the radar camera project, we used a 48 element eye radar array to see through walls. The intended application for this effort was for SWAT teams. You can see the raw data shown in the black and white image. It's difficult to interpret much from this raw data, but once we apply a few basic algorithms, you can start to see the image pop out. And applying an advanced algorithm, there are many more details, and you can really see the form of a human take shape. We used an FPGA-based processor, and we were capable of showing the raw data at real time, the basic algorithm images at 20 frames per second, and the advanced algorithm images at 4 frames per second. The eye radar imaging has been applied to several different ground penetrating applications, and here are some example images from those efforts. We have buried landmines, studies of detecting wires at various gauges, rebar embedded in concrete, and subsurface asphalt damage. We've also tested the eye radar on both metal and plastic pipes in different types of soil. In the image on the left, you can see the raw eye radar data. And using the tomography algorithms, we create a volume image of that soil where the pipe was buried. 
On the bottom, there you can see a three-inch plastic pipe was buried at 1.3 feet, and the same type of three-inch plastic pipe buried at 2.6 feet. In the table on the right side, you can see that soils like sand, which are dry and loose, are more easily penetrated by the eye radar than heavy, moist soils. In the sand, we were able to see the plastic pipes down to a depth of eight feet, while in the dense, wet soils, we were able to see down to two feet. Other studies have included objects buried at various soil depths. And in this case, we buried a bread box size metallic object at three, six, and nine feet deep. The images show the results from an eye radar array that was mounted to a vehicle platform. Many of these ground penetrating radar systems have been fielded. The Hermes bridge deck inspection and the Perez high precision roadway scanning are both systems designed for the transportation industry. The landmark landmine detection and Jaedo buried threat detection system are also designed for ground penetration applications. In a different application where we're not looking into the ground, we mount the eye radar onto a vehicle and actually look into a building. In this case, the eye radar array is capable of detecting the floor plan of the building. The eye radar sensor is integrated with other sensors like LIDAR, video GPS, and airborne radar. And we use all this information to extract the floor plan model. In addition, single element eye radars were in place around the building and used to monitor humans moving throughout the building. So as you can see, there are numerous types of applications for eye radar imaging. But we're not quite at Superman's level yet, because we are still governed by real-world technology trade-offs. Low frequencies are more easily capable of penetrating materials, while high frequencies achieve a higher imaging resolution. Sometimes we're limited in range and material penetration by the available power or constraints on battery life. Additionally, imaging capability and speed is often a function of computational horsepower available or the size of the system to be built. The good news is our eye radar capabilities are continuing to improve, especially with the rapid semiconductor industry advancements. We are building increasingly wide bandwidth and high sensitivity radars. We're integrating them with high throughput embedded signal processors, and we're continuing to refine our algorithms through extended research and development. If you have more questions about eye radar and eye radar imaging, please feel free to contact Charity Follett at the Industrial Partnerships Office. My name's Christine Paulson, and thank you for joining me today.